Florida may be better known for its oranges, but it's tomatoes that rule in the farm fields surrounding the small town of Immokalee. In fact, during the winter months, nearly all of America's domestically grown tomatoes, still green when they're picked, come from this part of South Florida. And it's a large and poor immigrant workforce that's essential in getting that crop from plant to plate. Tomato harvesting is still very much a, a by hand work. I mean, there's no machine that exists. To that do this. is correct, yes. You know, one of the Steve McCann is harvesting manager for Pacific Tomato Growers, a major producer in Florida. The production volume from here is somewhere around 12 to 1400 boxes per acre, and we pack 25 pound boxes, is what we're averaging. So it's industrial scale. Industrial farming. scale, correct. However, Florida's tomato industry is a business that's long been accused of exploiting its workforce through overwork, underpay, and mistreatment. That's turned these tomato fields into the front lines of a high-profile national campaign to improve the lives of farm workers. People who work in agriculture are among the least paid, uh, least protected workers in the whole country. This is their standards of engagement. Mm. Jordan Buckley and his colleagues are with the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, or CIW and the Interfaith Action Network, which works with faith groups to help farm workers. For people of faith, this is, you know, for us this is a moral issue, you know, how the people who pick our food are treated. Now to understand the plight of farm workers, you have to know something about their place in America's industrial food economy. They're some of the poorest workers here in our country, and yet not for lack of hard work. Um, it's not some you know, dearth of industriousness, and in fact, the reason is is because the increasing consolidation of purchasing among retailers. So where you have the fast food and food service and re uh, supermarkets uh, squeezing their suppliers and demanding ever cheaper uh, costs for their tomatoes, um, that's resulted in, in growers squeezing their farm workers. And that's why farm workers haven't seen a real wage increase in upwards of three decades. Florida's tomato workers are usually paid by how much they pick traditionally getting about 45 to 50 cents for every 32 pound bucket they fill. That means to make a day's minimum wage, each worker has to pick two and a half tons of tomatoes a day. What does that kind of work mean for the daily lives of farm workers and their families? 28-year-old Darinel Salas struggles to support his wife and two girls on what he makes in the fields. Because four other farm workers live in the same dilapidated trailer, his whole family shares one small room. Immokalee is a town full of young men from Mexico, Central America, and Haiti. Many undocumented who have come here to scratch out a better life for themselves by harvesting Florida's tomato crops. Some of them end up victims of the industry's worst abuses, including incidents of modern-day slavery. There have also now been nine federally prosecuted slavery operations in just the last 14 years here in Florida agriculture. Slavery? Yeah, literal, literal slavery. Right here on 3rd and Boston, if we go down four blocks, that was the side of where workers are locked in the back of a cargo truck, uh, literally shackled, and we saw bruises on their wrists from where they had been uh, literally restrained by their employers. Yet despite the dangers and low pay, farmhands are eager to work. To see how eager, you've got to get up very early. Every morning in the pre-dawn hours, this parking lot in downtown Immokalee becomes a giant open-air labor market. Hundreds of farm workers come here looking to make contact with labor bosses. If they're lucky, they'll be picked for another hard day of work in the tomato fields. The men and women selected are the ones boarding buses that take them directly to the fields. It's in this parking lot that we met Oralia Inojosa, who's worked in Immokalee's tomato fields for nearly 30 years. But things are slowly starting to get better for Florida's tomato field workers. Last year, after more than a decade of patient organizing work, 
the coalition of Immokalee workers reached a landmark agreement with growers and corporate tomato buyers, like McDonald's and Burger King. The agreement gives farm workers a penny more for every pound of tomatoes they pick. Now that doesn't sound like much, but that one cent increase translates into an additional 32 cents for every bucket picked by workers. That in turn will boost each farmhand's pay by about $5,000 a year. We're basically on the threshold of entering into this new industry of having uh, rights protected and, and there being this consensus among buyers that we demand humane labor conditions in our supply chain. The agreement has also made some in Florida's powerful tomato industry question their past actions and attitudes. Historically, it has not been uh, the poster child for good behavior and good treatment of its, its workers. That's, mm -hmm. you, you admit to that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sarah Goldberger is a spokesperson for Pacific Tomato Growers. She says the agreement between workers and the tomato industry has replaced tension with cooperation. It has been so non-adversarial, it's, it's a pleasure, quite honestly. That's a big change. Yes. Other changes in the fields, like this one owned by Pacific Tomato, include greater access to drinking water and more rest periods, regular bathroom breaks, and a zero tolerance for verbal abuse and sexual harassment by field bosses. Now that the coalition of Immokalee workers and its allies have an agreement, they're spreading the word about it. Un saludo para toda la gente rock and rollera del área de Immokalee. The small community radio station they run in Immokalee regularly tells workers listening about their rights, pay, and future organizing plans. La campaña para mejorar las condiciones de trabajo y los sueldos para los trabajadores en el estado de la Florida. Worker advocate and former field hand Lucas Benitez met us at the early morning labor gathering to talk about how important these changes are to the men and women who pick America's tomato crop. Y es lo que queremos, que sea un trabajo digno donde cada trabajador, cada persona que va ahí se sienta orgulloso de ser parte de la industria agrícola, de saber que está poniendo la comida en millones de, de, de mesas cada día y que está él también recibiendo lo suficiente para poner la comida en su propia casa. However, the coalition of Immokalee workers and its allies in religious and faith groups say they have much work left to do. This one right here is to public supermarkets. That includes a new national campaign focused on supermarket chains, which have declined to participate in the penny per pound pay agreement. There's three principal sectors of tomato retail, fast food, food service, and supermarkets. So now the leaders of the fast food industry are on board, the leaders of the food service industry are on board, all that remains are the supermarkets. We thank for this day and opportunity we have to worship what a gift that is. To keep pressure on the stores and to make sure gains are protected, farm workers regularly reach out to religious leaders and congregations. And so I'm joined by Darinell. This morning, Jordan and workers from Immokalee, including Darinell Salas, are addressing a Presbyterian church in Naples, Florida. These speaking engagements are part of a sustained campaign to get people of faith thinking about fairness and justice when they sit down to eat. Brigetta Genther of Interfaith Action has been working in Immokalee for eight years on behalf of workers. You know, many times when we say grace, we're grateful for the food on our plates. Um, but where did that food travel? Who picked it? How did it get to us? And that's something that we don't often think about, but I think that as people of faith, we are called to think about the connections between us and those who toil in the fields day in and day out to put food on our plates. For the men and women who pick Florida's tomatoes, their most important harvest has been some measure of justice and respect. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, I'm Saul Gonzalez in Immokalee, Florida.